At this point, we have a very broad understanding of the mechanisms and the characters of various types of energy transfer. And so in this brief video, I wanna focus in on the most important energy transfer process in organic photochemistry, triplet energy transfer. There are a large number of organic triplets that cannot be generated via direct excitation followed by inter system crossing. And to generate, study, explore the photochemistry of these triplet states, we need to use sensitization, and that takes advantage of the triplet energy transfer process. So here we're gonna look at some specific aspects of triplet energy transfer and some compounds that are commonly used for this purpose. Triplet energy transfer is the most common and important energy transfer process in organic photochemistry to generate those organic triplets that we can't make any other way. A general scheme for triplet energy transfer is shown here on the right. We start on the reactant side with a donor molecule, D star, typically in its T1 state, and an acceptor molecule in its singlet ground state, on the product side, we have the energy donor now in its singlet ground state and the acceptor now in its excited T1 state. So we have indeed transferred energy and converted a singlet to a triplet. Now, this may look spin forbidden in that A in a singlet state goes to A star in a triplet state. However, notice also that D star in a triplet state goes to D in a singlet state. So if we look at the overall spin multiplicity of D star and A on the reactant side, and D and A star on the product side, we see that overall, no change in spin multiplicity has occurred since we still have one singlet and one triplet on the product side. So overall, triplet energy transfer is actually spin allowed. The way this typically goes down in practice is we photo excite D from its ground singlet state to its first excited singlet state. Rapid intersystem crossing and vibrational relaxation convert the S1 state of D star into the T1 state of D star, and then there is this coupled non-radiative transition that happens where the transition of D star T1 back to DS0 is coupled to the transition of AS0 to AT1. And these are at equal energies, as they must be for these non-radiative horizontal transitions. And often in practice, we use a high energy filter to prevent the photo excitation of A. So notice that A star's singlet state, the S1 state of A, is above this dotted line. This indicates that it's impossible to photo excite A under the conditions where triplet energy transfer is applied because there is no light with enough energy, with a high enough energy, hitting the sample to perform this photo excitation. So it does not occur. Now, immediately a question you may be asking is, what is the mechanism of triplet energy transfer? Is it dexter? Is it fret? Could it be both? Well, if we think about what dexter and fret depend on, what the rates of those energy transfer processes depend on, we'll realize that coulombic energy transfer, or fret, is going to be very, very slow for most triplet molecules. And this is because the absorption coefficient, the extinction coefficient associated with the S0 to T1 transition is typically very small. And so here we're talking about the absorption coefficient for this transition, absorption of a photon by the singlet ground state to form the T1 state. This is spin forbidden, and so it's associated with very small epsilon value, and this leads to a very slow, in fact, prohibitively slow energy transfer via fret or the Coulombic mechanism. As such, TET must occur via the dexter or exchange mechanism. And of course, as we saw earlier in the video on sensitizers, the ideal for the energy donor is that there is a very small energy gap between S1 and T1. In other words, a very small delta EST value. This ensures rapid intersystem crossing, encourages a high quantum yield for intersystem crossing, so that D star, when it's around in solution, is predominantly in its T1 state at any given time. Now, a point I've made on several occasions is that endothermic energy transfer is not forbidden by the laws of thermodynamics. It's just often very, very slow. And for triplet energy transfer, when delta E is greater than just a few kilocalories per mole and positive, the rate is negligibly slow of energy transfer. On the other hand, when you move to the exothermic regime, energy transfer gets extremely fast to the point where it's often rate limited by diffusion in the sense that every diffusional encounter between D star and A leads to an energy transfer event. We can see, for example, in this data that for all of the exothermic 
cases of energy transfer anywhere well, where delta E dA is, is less than zero, negative six, negative five, negative 23, the rate of energy transfer is extremely rapid and on the order of diffusion. A good benchmark for a rate constant of diffusion is about one times 10 to the ninth per second. And here we've got five times 10 to the ninth, nine times 10 to the ninth, and two times 10 to the ninth for the rate constant of energy transfer. Extremely rapid for exothermic energy transfer, which happens when the acceptor's triplet energy, the energy of A star T1, is lower than the triplet energy of the donor, D star T1. On the flip side, when we talk about endothermic triplet energy transfer, for example, here, plus six, plus five in this case, and plus eight in this case, first, first of all, the rates of energy transfer in the forward direction are not even listed because they are undetectably slow. And even if we look at the rate of reverse energy transfer, it remains relatively slow. And so we can measure, for example, the rate of back energy transfer, essentially the rate happening in the opposite direction, and this remains slow for cases of endothermic energy transfer suggesting that we get very little energy transfer in the forward direction at any given time. Interestingly, even though we can think of triplet energy transfer as involving a non-radiative transition happening, for example, in a D star A exaplex, it does not follow an energy gap law. In other words, the energy gap, delta E dA, does not appear to profoundly affect the rate of energy transfer. And we can see that, for example, in the exothermic data that all of the rate constants are on the order of 10 to the ninth per second, even though there is a vast difference in delta E across these three examples. However, triplet energy transfer's rate can be affected by sterics. Since collisions are necessary and it's necessary for the orbitals housing the SOMO electrons in D star T1 to get in the vicinity of orbitals in A. When that's impeded due to sterics, the rate of triplet energy transfer can be slowed. And this paper highlights a prominent example of this.